Hello and welcome to the 35th video from 3 Minutes Deutsch. Today I'm going to be talking more about the genitive case, but this time we're talking about genitive prepositions. Normally, whenever you look up a German textbook, they're probably only going to list four of the genitive prepositions, but there are actually several others. The reason they leave the other ones out is not actually because they're more difficult, they're just seldom used, and therefore they leave them out. Let's start with the four that usually are in a German textbook. Anstatt means instead of. This one's pretty straightforward as far as how to use it, because it translates relatively well. Obviously, since it's a genitive preposition, you're going to follow it up with the genitive case. Anstatt eines Hundes werde ich eine Katze kaufen. Instead of a dog, I will buy a cat. Der Junge will ein Auto anstatt eines Fahrrads. The boy wants a car instead of a bicycle. You can also use anstatt in an infinitival clause, like I talked to you about in episode number 25. Link right there. Trotz means in spite of. This also works relatively well as far as translation is concerned, because in spite of really doesn't have that many options. Trotz des Wetters gehe ich draußen. In spite of the weather, I am going outside. Trotz der Empfehlung bestellen die Kunden den Rinderbraten. In spite of the recommendation, the customers are ordering the roast beef. Während means during. For example, während des Spiels schwitzen die Spieler. During the game, the players sweat. Die Schüler sollen während der Prüfung still sein. The students should be quiet during the exam. Wegen means because of. Das Mädchen isst den Apfel wegen des Wurmes nicht. The girl is not eating the apple because of the worm. Wegen meines Vermieters darf ich keinen Hund haben. Because of my landlord, I am not allowed to have a dog. That covers the four main genitive prepositions that you'll find in a German textbook. There are, however, several other ones, all of which have to do with location. Innerhalb, for example, means inside. Der Brand begann innerhalb des Hauses. The fire started inside of the house. Ich höre Stimmen innerhalb meines Kopfes. I hear voices inside of my head. Außerhalb is obviously the opposite of innerhalb and means outside of. Die Jungen stehen außerhalb der Schule. The boys are standing outside of the school. Mein Hund weint außerhalb meines Autos. My dog is crying outside of my car. Jenseits is one that I basically never use. It means on the other side of, or beyond. Jenseits des Gebirges sind die Yetis. On the other side of the mountains are the Yetis. Jenseits des Waldes befindet sich ein Dorf. On the other side of the forest, or beyond the forest, there is a village. Diesseits is the opposite of that, and so obviously is this side of. Diesseits der Grenze ist sicher. This side of the border is secure. Diesseits des Atlantics ist es viel schöner. Obviously, as you've probably come to learn from the other prepositions that we've gone over in this series, the main trick to this is, first of all, understanding what they actually mean and how to use them. Then you have to understand the underlying case that is used with each of the prepositions. So if you don't understand the genitive case, obviously this is going to be a problem for you. Try out your knowledge in the comments down below. If you want more information about this topic, you can check out my blog over here. Aber das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss.